Hi guys, Ken here, Ken Small Engines in the driveway, or actually on the wall right now. It's a cold day today, a little breezy. You can see the wind's kicking around. We've got a Toro Power Clear 518ZE. Now, 518, five horsepower, 18 inches wide, Z for the lock on the chute, and E for electric start. It's got a plug-in starter, okay? These engines, they're decent engines, okay? Um, customer had a problem where he said he was using it and then it just would not throw anymore, wouldn't spin anymore. So I figured it was probably the belt. So I said, all right, let me come get it. Gave him an estimate on what it might be. And he said, take it. So I just warmed it up. I'm gonna change the oil. So let me shut you off for a second there so I can get this oil draining out. All right, we're, all right, we're back. This thing has a 10 millimeter screw for the oil. It takes roughly 12 ounces of oil. So I'm gonna use a little Chinese food container. Righty tighty. Wow, lefty, Ugh, Lucy, whoa. I don't think this guy's ever had this thing off. Let's see what the oil looks like. I'm gonna tilt it back a little bit because these tend to oil, have oil run all over the place. Let me tilt it back. Actually, you know what? It might make a mess, so let me get a paper towel first. I'll be right back. It still confuses me why they don't have a little nipple sticking out of there. Because, watch, it's probably going to get all over the place. So we'll tilt it up. There's a washer, too. Make sure you get the washer. And here we go. All right. It always makes a mess, and it is making a mess. I hate these things. That's about 12 ounces right there. And yep, it's pretty dirty. Yeah, not too much spilled out. Now the crush washer, you don't have to replace it every time. It's not a Honda Accord, it's a small engine. So let's put the plug back in. And I'm gonna work on this thing with no oil in it because with these, you have a vent here. See this breather vent? If you tilt this on its side, like you're bringing in a truck or something, you tip it over, oil will get in this valve cover and come out this vent. It's just an atmospheric vent. So if you're gonna tilt it on its side or anything, make sure there's no oil in it when you're doing it because oil will come out this breather line and it's not a breather, it's just a vent. That's all it is, there's really nothing to it, so. All right, let me get this thing wiped off here. Uh, everyone's saying, what's the torque rating, Ken? Hey, the torque rating is my wrist. That's it, that's torqued. Click, all right. You learn from experience over the years, guys, what torque should be, so. All right, that's done. So now let's get to the root of the problem here. All right, and the root of the problem was, he said he had no drive. So I had already taken these out and my suspicion was that the belt is bad. Okay, so let me see if I could turn this thing, mount it in such a way that you can see it on camera. There's no oil in it, so I don't have to worry about oil leaking out. So here's the cover. And basically what you have, three ace head machine screws on top. Two of them here, three ace head, but they're machine screws. Okay, those are on the top. Then on the bottom here, you have a three ace head plastic screw. It's got the coarse thread for use in plastic. That's a plastic screw. Don't mix them up. It won't be a good thing. Then over here, you have a 5 16 hex head with a 3 8 nylock nut on the other side. So I've already loosened everything. I'm just going to take it apart. Okay. Now that we have them apart, let's take the cover off. I already had taken the cover off the other day, 
So what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna mimic what I found the other day. So let's see if that's a good shot. Take off the cover. And what I found, it's not there now, but I found a whole mess of rubber, all kinds of rubber in there from the belt being all destroyed. And what happened was, you could see all kinds of rubber in here. The belt was in here and on top of the drive pulley, it was sitting there like this, all right? And you can see how it burnt right through it. So what happened was the guy was plowing snow. He got it jammed in there like a snow cone effect in there. It didn't allow the auger to spin, but this belt is kind of flimsy. There's enough torque in this engine. That pulley kept going and it burnt right through the belt. So now you say to yourself, where am I gonna find a belt? Well, you could look on the belt. The belt has a Toro part number on it, which is a 1177733. Or you can go online, type in the model number. The model number is a 38473. And if you look up Toro 38473 parts, that'll give you a parts list for the belt. Or you could do what I do, do all of it and go to your dealer and get a new belt. He made sure I had the model number. And of course, he sells me a 117-7733, which is the correct belt. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the belt on. Then uh, I'll blow everything off. The belt that I have, you can see, it's pretty. it's got real good ridges in it and all that. This one here had barely any ridges left in it. It... it I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. All right, so let me get a brush. I'm gonna brush off some of this stuff in here. Yeah, actually, air hose would be better. Let me see if I can get my air hose. I'll be right back. All right, now well, we got my air hose and we got my blow gun with my long 1 8 inch brass tube on it so I can get into all the cracks and crevices and blow her out. So let me blow her up for you. This cover's got a lot, of, a lot of crap in it. Let me blow that thing out too. Got the cover wiped down, everything ready to go here. All right, I'm gonna put oil back in it, then we're gonna see if the adjustment looks okay. The way you know you're adjusted properly when the belt is not engaged, the auger shouldn't turn. So let me put oil in it, we'll start it up and we'll see what happens. All right guys, here's the fun part of doing videos. I had the belt going on showing you how I mounted it, but for some reason that video did not make it. I don't know what happened, the camera wasn't on or the battery shut off or something. So I'm gonna take the covers off and I'm gonna show you again how I did it. Ugh. It is about four degrees out, so I'm doing it in the garage even though I got the cold air coming in. All right, so you got three ace, three ace, three ace. Let's take those out. The bottom one is a plastic screw. The top ones are metal screws. Don't confuse them. All right, so on the bottom here, you have a 5 16 hex. 
think you can see it. 516 hex with a 3 ace on the inside. So we'll get the 516 bit. Ugh, it is cold, people. There's the 516. All right, we'll put our wrench on here. Okay, that's disconnected. Man, it's cold, people. It is cold. All right, all the screws are off. Here comes the cover. There's the cover. All right, so what I wanted to show you, people, was how the belt goes. So I'm going to take the camera off so I can... Whoa, 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 whoa. There goes the phone. It's always something, people. That's what it takes. YouTube videos. That's what happens, guys. Things happen. Okay, here's the belt. If you notice, the way the belt goes on, you have to get it in back of this bracket. You go right in back of this bracket with the belt to get it on. You can push the idler by hand, push the idler by hand to put the belt underneath there to get it on the pulley. That's your brake, okay? So it has to go in back of that, as you see, okay? Then let go, make sure the belt's going around, okay? It goes on top of this bracket, and as you can see, it says belt here. So you know where to put the belt, okay? Then the belt goes around the engine pulley, okay? Goes under this bracket, goes under the idler, and goes on top of this shelf. As you can see, belt here. It tells you where the belt goes, okay? So there's no way to screw up putting the belt on. It tells you belt here, belt here, belt underneath there, and that's it. So I just wanted to show you guys that's how the belt goes on. That was the missing uh, segment of the video, and I'll put it back in right now. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. All right, the way I do it, guys, I tilt it up, put my funnel in. I put in about 10 ounces to start with, 5W30. A little bit at a time, you don't want it to overflow. Put in about 10 ounces. That should be about 10, 11 ounces. Let it drain in there for a second. And we have to make sure the unit is level. And the unit is, yeah, it's pretty level. So we're gonna check the oil coming out the end. I'll take the funnel out. And it looks like, yeah, we're right about there. I'll see if I can put a little more in, but for the most part, I think we're there. If you tilt it back slightly from level, it should just start to come out. So in this case, yeah, it's right there. That's good. All right, the oil level is good. If you want to check it with the dipstick, you can. But the way they suggest to do it, you do not screw the dipstick in. You stick it in there. You take it out, and if you notice, it's right up to the full mark. So we're good. All right, so I'm gonna screw that dipstick in there. And be careful when you're screwing in these dipsticks, they strip easy. If you cross thread them, you're not gonna be happy. So let me wipe all the oil off of here. All right. We know that the drain bolt is tight, that's tight. Okay, one thing these have is the hidden dipstick in the front. Let me see if I can reach it. Uh, hmm, can I reach it? Kind of difficult to reach. Let me see. to reach well like i said this one wasn't leaking i don't know if they're on these engines this is the 99 cc engine i believe yeah this is 99 cc i know they're on the bigger engines i'm trying to see let me uh let me get a mirror i want to see if this has the hidden dipstick 
All right, I'm gonna shine a mirror in there. See if I can see if the hidden dipstick is in there. We look down, there's the electric starter. see another dipstick there maybe this engine doesn't have it I know the big ones do maybe this one doesn't if anyone knows if the 99 CCers have it I'll look up a drawing of the engine to see if it has it this one wasn't leaking at all so I'm pretty confident that it's okay but normally from the bottom you can re oh here we go reach up let's see what we got here there's the engine I'm reaching up do I feel another dipstick nope I just feel the starter there so I think we're good. I think there's no hidden dipstick on this one. Like I said, if anyone wants to correct me, feel free. Okay, now that we got it back together, let's put it on the ground. Get the foils in. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna start it up. Okay, we're gonna start it up and we're gonna see what the belt does. It shouldn't turn the auger in the idle when the thing is just idling, it shouldn't turn without it being engaged. So let's get you a shot where we can see the augers and we can see the belts. All right, there we go. I'm gonna turn it on and we'll see if it'll idle without the auger spinning. So key in, prime for a good time. Let's pull it. doesn't turn the auger when it's idling, but I think it could probably be a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna take this Z-bend here and I'm gonna bring it up one more to adjust it. So we get a little more tension on there. All right. And all you do, you pull down on the spring. Actually, you could take the spring out of the top here. Okay, and you can adjust it by putting it up one notch. That's all I'm gonna do, one notch. Okay. Put it back in there. Let's try it now. It's adjusted one more notch higher. So we'll get a little bit more tension on here. Let's turn it on and let's see if it still doesn't spin when it started. And if it doesn't, that's it. I'm buttoning it up. All right. So here we go. done guys I adjusted a little more so now you have some decent tension on it the spring expands probably eh, maybe an inch total and it's got a ton more to go it doesn't spin the auger when it's idling which is what you want so I'm gonna put the cover back on this thing and uh, we're gonna call it a day Uh, you got your two three ace hex head machine screws. Right, do them by hand first, make sure they go in, they're not cross threading. 
There's one. There's two. Your plastic screw that goes on the bottom as it goes into plastic. All right, and then your 5 sixteenths with a 3 8 nylock nut on it. That goes in here. And your nylock nut. All right, I'm gonna tighten these all up and then we're done. So if you have any questions, let me know guys. Very simple, did the oil change change the belt customer should be happy next video we got this guy's bigger brother this one this is a 721 so it's seven horsepower 21 inches with an electric start as well with the e it doesn't have the lockable chute tilt that's why there's no q on it it would be a qe if it had that this one came in the guy said it doesn't engage when he pulls on the bale i believe the z bend or z bend cable is broken inside where the Z is. That'll be the next video, guys. We will talk to you soon. Have a great night, everybody. Before I forget, one thing I wanted to show you on these augers is the wear hole. See that hole right there? When that auger paddle wears away, so that hole is gone, now it's time to replace those paddles. This paddle's in good shape. He's got a good quarter inch of paddle to wear down before he has to replace it and you can see his scraper bar that's in nice shape too is his white scraper bar so this thing really hasn't been used that much as evidenced by this wear hole like i said when that wear hole disappears you know it's time to replace these paddles all right i just wanted to add that in there guys because people don't really know what the wear holes are there for and don't even know what they are and when it starts spitting snow out the front of the thrower instead of out the chute when it starts spitting out the front down here that means your paddles are worn all right guys that's it for me we'll talk to you soon lastly another thing i found look how this guy had the handlebars on that's not right that curved washer should go on the outside underneath the knob so that this end of the carriage bolt can go into the handlebar i corrected it on this side so the carriage bolt should go all the way into the tube then the curved washer then the knob I'm going to correct it on the other side, but that would probably make it for a little bit of, uh, yeah, flexy handlebars. Now he's going to have a nice, tight, stiff handlebar. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon.